my meekness. Is this on? That's perfect. Is this on? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm like. Right Are you sure? You. Okay. I'm right beside Just you, checking. so I can. <laughs> Wait. So I'm 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 Dr. Stephanie Ganser, and this is. I'm uh, Dr. Robert McNeil, but I go by Bob. Did you think you're, were you going to forget that? Is that because you are uh, an older doctor? Doctor? This is between two teeth. I hope you're going to enjoy us. <laughs> so why, why this? Why what? Literally, why this? Why something like this? What's the... Well, I... So I've actually, I took several art classes in dental school to try to get this perfect. And I would say my You've very- You've done well. You've done well. Thank you. Uh, I started, I just, uh, the, the, my most recent improvement has been to draw these little root canals on the teeth. Oh, that's good. That's Yeah. So good. I would say that is- It's good that you're a periodontist. That good. It's good that you're the, a periodontist and not a root canal specialist. But oh. I appreciate, what are you trying to do with this though? We, so what we're trying to do here is we want to have some live fun content for listeners. I need, I'm sorry, I'm are, you, are you trying to, are you trying I'm to, so this is the talk problem. This the is the problem because he constantly interrupts me. Not cool at all. So can you hear me now? Uh, I'm going to try to still hear you. Are you sure? But what's the point? So what, right, what's what are you point? trying to do? So here? the point of this podcast is to deliver some clinical pearls, some life pearls. I hope we can all laugh at ourselves and learn something along the way. Life's been way too short and groggy with COVID-19. We're here to lighten things up and we are here to cast a wide net. Uh, everyone's in the same boat. Here. So let's do this. Let's jump into a clinical pearl. Let's talk about Maybe something that we do every day. Sure. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Hey, let's cover local anesthetic technique. Okay. I don't want to pick on you in a personal story with you. However, I you will. You would never. I would never. However, I will. And what what I you know what comes to mind is uh, you know you tell it. You're a little bit better at telling no, this I one. I, I think you should tell it. I enjoy when you tell this story. So when you've been in practice for a while, and I've been practicing as an oral maxillofacial surgeon for I don't know almost twenty years. You can get lax on your local anesthetic technique, especially when you have the benefits of being able to provide sedation. And so I think it was probably day two for you. You came in and saw me doing a case and the patient was uh, sedated, but perhaps... Uh, uh, were they struggling, doctor? Well, they were not as comfortable <laughs> as one would like. And so you came in uh, and made a flippant comment. Of, a flippant comment? You're going you to get them numb next time, and then you just waltz out of the so room. So let me know. So our, our listeners are kind of like, what's going on here? He's trying to tell this story. So let's set the scene a little bit better. You're in the room. You're taking out teeth. The patient is Sometimes some patients sounds. move around. Oh, they're moving around. Okay. And then I think as a curious young doctor myself, I, I come in, and I'm just a curious kind of curious person. It's like, oh, man, does Art, did you get – Adequate local anesthesia there, doctor. So let's let's do the clinical pearl there. So I had two ways to go. Okay. I could have been, you know, like, what are you talking about? Or reevaluate the local anesthetic technique. And that's what I did. And I think, you know, we always kind of talk about it. Profound local anesthesia does some wonderful things. And um, injection techniques, obviously, that's how patients oftentimes evaluate us as dentists on how pain-free the injection technique is. If you don't have the um, ability to provide sedation, then it really becomes a critical thing. And I know a lot of practitioners start off with a plain local anesthetic first. No epinephrine doesn't burn as much for the patient. They do a little tiny bit doing some distraction thing, shaking, and then they stop and they pause and I think working with local anesthetic in your hands to come up with what's going to work for you, what's going to work for the patient is going to be a really big thing. There is a, a myth out there that people talk about, well, I don't have to be good at local anesthetic if I just sedate people. Right. What do you say to that? And I say being better at local anesthesia 
profound local anesthesia is going to help make a smoother sedation and keep you away from higher levels of sedation. I, I absolutely agree on that. From a, a new doc in practice perspective, you know, when I got out of dental school, I wasn't great at local. I know I was kind of busting your chops a little bit. Do you think bit. you'll ever get to be good at local? That's rude, rude. <laughs> I think I've gotten a lot better and it's because of our conversations. But, but here's the other point. Um, I, I hate to bring up that I'm on the state dental board. Do you? Obviously. Obviously. No. Okay. Uh, of course. However, what we do see from a state dental board perspective is there are challenges with too much local anesthesia. So the answer is not, I'm going to give four carpules to take out a single tooth. It is proper selection being careful, of course, with epinephrine. You and I talk about this all the time. You know, there's criteria out there, especially when a patient has cardiovascular disease of limiting the amount of epinephrine. That's a real thing from the state board side of the equation. And I love what you're talking. I'm going to stop problems. you there. And I, I, this will you happen. Hate I hate here. to stop okay. you, but I'll stop you there. And I love, I, I want to, to highlight coffee. Why I, am I having to hold? Because you're the older, more experienced doc. Therefore, you hold the heaviest brunt. Well, it is between two teeth. And so I want to highlight to our listeners uh, and our subscribers that epinephrine is something that is key here. And, it, and you know, uh, Dr. McNeil has talked on how you it is key. Bob. Are you sure? I'm fine. Do you go by Bob? Bobby? Bob, Bob, you by Bobby. Gordon? No, just okay, Bob. Just Bob. We're Bobby. So, you know, so Bobby's done this thing where he's highlighted use of epinephrine. And, and this is something that... You, and overuse of epinephrine. So, That's right. The and overuse. And this is the point I kind of want to highlight here that you have just made. There are all kinds of concentrations of epinephrine. As a periodontist, uh, we use one to one to 50, uh, the green striped uh, cartridges there. There's also one to 100 and one to 200. One of the recent lectures you gave, Doc, you talked about silver cartridges. We're talking articane here for silver hair. And then gold cartridges are obviously for a little younger people. And in our office, what I've changed based on practicing with you and, and kind of seeing some of the some of the cases you you've kind of gone through is just that you got to be really careful with the amount of epinephrine you give. And just because you're giving, you know, as a periodontist, sometimes mm -hmm. If there's a bad bleed, we might give one to 50. <laughs> Which is every one of your procedures, <laughs> but go on. Not exactly true, uh, but it, but, the point, but the point is there where you really need to understand there's this, there's this argument on the value of epinephrine we give to achieve uh, hemostasis versus what is it doing on a systemic level with heart. Right. And yeah. And I've definitely seen negative outcomes from that and it, puts people in a, uh, getting good at local anesthetic, being careful, not too little local anesthetic, not too much local anesthetic. Talk to me about how, what's the average number of cartridges you will use for a case. So you're taking out a couple teeth, a couple teeth, usually probably two cartridges. If it's an older two patient, cartridges. if it's a, yes, two, if it's an older patient and uh, there's issues with blood pressure or cardiovascular disease, I'll pretty much routinely start with a full carpule of something without epinephrine and then be comfortable putting in one of uh, Articane Silver, as you mentioned, the one to 200,000. Sometimes we are treating ourselves. Tell I've me more had about cases uh, at the board level where someone would do four carpules per tooth. And if you're taking out four wisdom teeth, four times four. Now we're getting. How's your math? Uh, 16. I think that's right. Uh, that's too much. And the patient had a local anesthetic overdose and had to be hospitalized. So you got to be careful with all of that. Uh, I, I think that's a great pearl to have local anesthetic. That's a great way for us to start off with our initial between two teeth. Uh, I would like to make a couple comments. She picked out the chairs. She's actually really one of the comments we're getting person. in here from one of our I subscribers right now is asking at, at what point, how many years in practice, Doc, will you will it take to get you a higher chair? We, to get you a seat at the table, perhaps. The coffee table's higher, than, higher than you at this point. I'm actually <laughs> tall and she is not tall, is how she prefers to is, be you described know, it's here. 2022, and you cannot make fun of short females anymore. I'm sorry. It's not funny anymore. It's official. Not funny. 
Yeah. So, and we don't technically have any subscribers. You referenced a subscriber. Yes, my mom. Oh, your subscribed. mom. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> she, she just texted wonderful. me now. She doesn't know uh, about the YouTube, but hello, she's trying. Hello, Stephanie's mom. It took her so, a few tries to well, get anyways, spelling right. Well, anyways, thank you for this adventure. Let's see how this rolls out. I, I think, you know, this is a great idea that you had. Uh, let's give some information. Let's try to have fun with it. Let's try to be quirky. I'm hoping at some point I'm going to have a drawing so I don't have to hold this tooth because, you know, it gets tricky. But uh, thank you for joining us Absolutely, on this adventure. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We are excited to, to kind of kick this off and there will be more to come. Thanks.